This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Associated Equipment Distributors. I'm Associate Editor Ben Thorpe. Welcome to On the Record. And we're here at the 2023 Equip Expo Show. Let's head back to the office where I'll give you an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. At this year's Equip Expo, Ag Equipment Intelligence editors caught up with several manufacturers to talk about the future of electrification in the ag equipment market. One of those manufacturers was Yanmar, which unveiled its first electric tractor at this year's show. The prototype was made with tech from Yanmar's battery technology subsidiary Elio, which is based in the Netherlands. The tractor is set for commercial launch at next year's Equip Expo. Several other tractor manufacturers are already offering electric tractors or are planning to. For example, when asked if they have any plans to get into electric tractors, Bobcat Vice President of Global Innovation Joel Honeyman said they're considering all options but will eventually offer an electric tractor. Everything's on the table when it comes to that. I mean, at some point it will. Yeah. I mean, we're prioritizing. We build lots of different products, so we're prioritizing. But so we got a loader, we got an excavator, we got uh, um, the mower. So we're, we, we're already starting down this journey from that standpoint. Other electric tractor competitors for Yanmar will include CNH Industrial, Solictrek, and John Deere. With this in mind, we asked the director of Yanmar America's Rural Lifestyle Division, Joel Richardson, what he thought the true potential of the electric tractor market really is. Richardson believes there's still potential out there, though they're keeping a close eye on this market's trends. Yeah, I think there's there's still potential out there. There's you know there's um, early adopters, and there's certain segments within rural lifestyle that that would prefer a quiet tractor, you look at equestrians working close quarters in, the, in a barn with horses or other livestock where you're, you're really uh, in close quarters and don't want to disturb the, the animals themselves. So that's that's one of the high potential areas we see, but we are continuing to, to watch the market. I, it, I don't expect it to be launched you know, this time next year at the show and immediately take over our core uh, t- traditional tractor sales with, with diesel engines. So. Something we'll continue to watch and, and play out. Uh, with that, we'll, we'll plan accordingly and forecast accordingly and roll out as many. We try to stay close to our dealers and, and survey them and you know how many, what forecasts are they giving us to, so then we know what's going, which is you know, what many manufacturers do to kind of keep an eye on the market and watch the trends. So we, we also try to track against other industries, power sports, automotive, and, and kind of watch what's going on. Um, and then try to make the best decisions we can off of that information. You can check out more coverage from this year's Equip Expo at RuralLifestyleDealer.com. This week's dealers on the move include Milton Cat and AgPro. Caterpillar dealer Milton Cat of North Syracuse, New York, announced the opening of a new 100,000 square foot facility. The 30,000 square foot service shop will have more than 20 technicians working in its 24 service bays. John Deere dealer AgPro announced it has completed the acquisition of South Daytona Tractor and Mower in South Daytona, Florida. Now here's Noah Newman with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thank you very much, Ben. TerraCamp's NextSat system generated a lot of buzz at the Farm Progress Show during its debut in the U.S. just a few months back. Well, the company this week announced a new partnership with the EW Group that will give the EW Group a minority stake in Nexat. It's another big step in the process of bringing this all-in-one machine to the market. The Nexat system has interchangeable implements for harvesting, spraying, planting, seeding, and more. It can perform virtually any task on the farm and is designed to boost soil health by only compacting 5% of the field. Now, the first Nexat system hit the field in Ukraine in 2017 and then Germany a few years later. But TerraCamp president and CEO Joseph Jandrish tells us the U.S. is now the primary focus of product development. We planted this spring and did some ground prep, um, and it's it's so new. We've we've heard a lot of uh, positive things and negative things, and that's why we're here. Um, We need feedback from the best farmers, and we're not looking at all the farmers. Uh, We're looking at the best 5%. 5%. It doesn't mean the biggest 5%, but we're looking at people that are concerned about the quality of the soil and multi-generational farms. It operates like a locomotive, if you're familiar. It's not a conventional tractor where you have an engine. Two 550 horsepower engines that provide power or that run the generator. 
The generator creates electricity. There's four generators, and each of those generators have a specific electric drive on the wheel. And with that, we have a much more efficient method of running these implements. Um, immediate uh, fuel savings of about 20% um, compared to conventional methods. The Nexat system is currently being tested in the Dakotas and Illinois. We have a lot of articles about it on precisionfarmingdealer.com. Head to the website, type in Nexat in the search bar, and you'll see a lot of information pop up about the revolutionary system. In the Technology Corner, I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Ben. Thanks, Noah. While autonomous farm equipment has generated a lot of buzz lately, the latest text poll from farm equipment suggests customers are interested in retrofit kits. Just over 53% of responding dealers said their customers are interested in buying retrofit kits that would allow their existing diesel tractors to operate autonomously. Just over 46% of responding dealers said their customers are not interested in buying retrofit kits that would allow their existing diesel tractors to operate autonomously. About 39% said their customers were somewhat interested. And just 14% said they had customers who were highly interested. To be a part of future polls, you can text FARM to 833-413-2175 to sign up. In its earnings released October 11th, Artsway reported $8.1 million in third quarter sales and $23.4 million in sales for the first nine months of the fiscal year. The company reported $5.5 million and $17.3 million specifically in agricultural product sales for its third quarter and year-to-date, respectively. This represented an almost 10% year-over-year increase in Artsway's year-to-date ag sales and a five-year high for the segment. Third quarter ag sales were down 12.8% year-over-year from $6.4 million last year. Artsway attributed the quarterly year-over-year decline to the timing of its beet equipment production. The company said it typically sees a spike in sales during its beet run, as it is Artsway's largest and most expensive equipment. However, Artsway shipped the majority of its beet equipment during the second quarter of fiscal 2023 compared to the third quarter of fiscal 2022. Farm equipment sales for the first nine months of the year were $14.8 million, up 8.3% year over year and a five-year high. Farm equipment part sales also hit a five-year high at $2.3 million. The company said it has seen increased demand for grinders, beet equipment, and manure spreaders thus far in 2023, and has continued to increase the number of stocking dealers it works with. Artsway says it is incentivizing its sales team to bring new dealers on board, and they are also offering favorable terms to new dealers to increase the company's reach. Artsway also reported a five-year low in work-in-process orders and rising finished goods inventories. Work-in-process inventory was valued at $267,000 as of August 31st of this year, down 50% year-over-year. Finished goods inventories were up almost 16% year-over-year to $3.1 million as of August 31st. Case IH dealer Titan Machinery announced October 18th that its founder and CEO David Meyer will transition to executive chairman effective February 1st of next year. Meyer co-founded Titan Machinery in 1980 with Peter Christensen, and since then has grown it from two locations to over 150 locations worldwide. This transition will put Titan Machinery's Chief Operating Officer and President Brian Knudsen in the role of CEO. Ag Equipment Intelligence sat down with Knudsen to discuss what will define his time as CEO, which he says will include not growing the business simply for the sake of growing. So. To continue to grow, there's tons of benefits we see for our customers and for our employees to scale and and to um, so to continue to grow and you know organically and through acquisitions um, and in a very sustainable manner as well and in a very healthy manner. Not you know you look at some contractors, some farmers, even as examples that grow just for the sake of growth. Um, and, and maybe don't do a best job farming those fields or whatever. And, and, and you see dealers and businesses sometimes do that too. So um, we're, we're, we look very critically um, uh, at every acquisition, analyzing each of the markets we want to go to. For next year's main challenges, Newton says inventory shortages and long lead times in certain key product categories appear they will continue well into 2024, and also the lower commodity prices that can impact customer segment. However, he noted that income averaging, forward contracting, insurance programs, subsidies, and most of all yields can certainly offset these lower commodity prices. Inventory is an interesting one, Ben, because uh, 
there's areas where we're still on allocation, where we're still not getting enough product that we want. And you're hearing that from other dealers too. And then there's certain other types of products that are building up a little bit, um, uh, both unused and new, more so new thus far. A lot of those are more the lower dollar ticket items. Um, so there is maybe a bit of a mix uh, topic within inventories. We're looking at $4 in some corn now versus you know pretty consistently $5 in some corn throughout last year. And, and operating loans as farmers go get those uh, in late winter, early spring here for next year are going to be at higher interest rates and measurably higher than they were last year and other inputs haven't come down as much. So undoubtedly, um, depending on yields, which is the other half of the equation, right? Uh, net farm income will likely be down next year. This week's data point is brought to you by the Ag Equipment Intelligence 2024 Executive Briefing. According to the latest data from the Agricultural Engineers Association, the UK saw 1,114 tractors over 50 horsepower registered in September. This represented a 4% year-over-year increase and put the country at 9,702 over 50 horsepower registrations for the first nine months of the year. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to bthorpe at lessertermedia.com. For On the Record, I'm Ben Thorpe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.